how that model works. So imagine the production function is one of those in which growth is possible. Right? Not technological change, but growth is possible. Remember, let's write it. Let's write it just so we keep it in mind. Right? One of those production functions in which I can take this away, right? This is you guys remember. So in that production function, yt is a kt at the row plus l with maybe a b parameter per unit of measure in front at the row times one over row. Row larger than zero, a quite large, and we know that the path is a path like this. It's a 45 degree line and the production function does like this. We have an asymptote at something larger than one. Okay? Okay? That's our model. And here, wage, saving, eh? blah, blah, blah. And just to make it clear, Let's write this like this, okay? Let's write it like kt plus 1 multiply the rate of return. And so here we write st equal kt plus 1. Okay? okay? The saving of the young becomes tomorrow's capital stock. And when old, they receive the return, total income from capital stock, all the others, right? So this is a simple model. There is a CS production function with enough substitutability. There is fixed labor supply. So demographic is such the same number of people in every generation, okay? We know that this is just a normalization. Population may be growing at constant rate, it doesn't matter, okay? People receive their labor income when they're young, because when they're young, they can work, right? Okay? They receive their labor income out of their labor income during very many periods. You can write this for 50 periods. Whatever we're going to say now will not change, right? So we can, instead of writing young and old, we can write period T, young, period 2, period 1, young, period 2, young, period 3, young, period, period 35, period 40, young. The period 41, old, period 53, old, blah, 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 period, whatever you like, old, okay? And then split. In the very first 40 period or 50 period, you earn your saving, whew, you earn your labor income, you consume, and you save. You put the saving in the capital stock, you earn an interest, you carry over to next period. Next period, you earn your labor income, you earn your return in your saving, you consume and you save whatever you want and put it back and so on. Keeps accumulating, okay? You got your pension plan, so to speak. You keep investing in the stock market. You keep buying uh, apartments in Grimini, <laughs> whatever, and then you rent it to the full Airbnb to tourists uh, from Russia, okay? Or from China, whatever. Uh, so you do that. When you reach retirement, you stop earning labor income and you start consuming out of your capital. This is just two periods, but trust me, whatever I say is true for many people, okay? Now, very interesting. You remember what happened in... So it looks like the infinite horizon, the infinite lived agent model, right? Because remember, what is that we did in that model? We started with a little bit of capital. We earn income from both sources. We consume some and save some. What we say, we put it back, became capital. We were bang, accumulated. And in that story, the capital stock kept growing. And income kept growing. And there was always enough income that we could buy that capital and more. So next period there was even more capital, and more capital, and more capital, right? And so our income kept going up. Now, let's see if you can see right away, I claim that here, with the same production function, 
And apparently the same story. The overlapping generation structure implies that this is impossible and growth will not continue forever. It's very simple to see in this example, but actually there was a period Larry Jones, Rory Manuel and I, without talking to each other, kept proving the same results and then we said, oh shit, I just wrote a paper with the same thing. <laughs> so we actually did this also in simultaneous, okay? Uh, it's not true. It's very interesting because it, it shows how important other things are in growth. In fact, it's one way of showing that the story of we grow because we accumulate capital and we keep passing it over, it just doesn't make any sense. It cannot be true. Let's see. Do you see why this is obviously straightforward, not true for the simple two period? No, oh, forget the good rule. We have no No, no. Remember how? Remember how the whole story works. Hey, the story with an infant lived agent is: every period, this person accumulates more capital, and it accumulates more capital because there is enough income in his hands or her hands to do so. Now, think here. In order to accumulate more capital, okay. ST plus 1 has to be bigger than ST, which is bigger than ST minus 1, which is bigger than ST minus 1, and so on. ST and ST plus 1 is financed how? Yes, by reducing consumption. But out of what kind of income? Wage. Labor income. Wage, exactly. Remember what the property of that model is. Mm, yeah, but that's also because you might have your capital. This, go further. Remember that model, the model we have there. What happens to WT times L in that model? We did it in class, you have to remember this. It's already the same. Huh? We are assuming it's the same. Yeah, no, it's not the same. It grows with income, but it grows much more slowly and it becomes a negligible fraction of income. Right? Remember that our prediction in that model, the black model, was there is growth because capital keeps growing, its productivity does not increase, and the capital income that we correctly said, the reproducible factor, collects a bigger and bigger and bigger share of national income until it becomes 100%. I didn't think. Labor becomes negligible. In particular, WT times L, which is an increasing function of KT, but increases a lot more slowly than KT, eventually becomes less than KT, and therefore cannot buy KT plus one. Let out, right? You see what I mean? The property of this model is to make it in a graph. Let me take this away for now. Well, is that KT here? Okay? So as KT increases linearly, so that's KT, that's KT equal KT, right? Output grows a bit more than K because the margin of productivity we have seen stays above one, right? Because output has to be equal to K plus a little bit more plus consumption. So at every point in time, if when KT is here, output has to allow for K for net investment that increases K, okay? I'm making depreciation zero, otherwise it's even bigger, and whatever consumption is. And remember the consumption also increases, okay? So it's here, 
Er tager skudt. Okay? And the distance between the two actually increases. Why? Because, obviously, right? Because the distance is IT and CT, and they also increase. So the distance here at T plus 1 has to be bigger than that. Okay? And in fact, it has to be true because this is 45 degree, and we know this is asymptotic to something with a slope more than 45 degrees. So because it's asymptotic to something more, the distance between the 45 degree line and the line, so the distance between the, 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 the diagonal line y equal x and the, and the line y equal 1.3 x increases, right? <laughs> it's 3, correct? With x. Good. This is very simple like that, okay? Good. Now, what happens to labor income? Labor income increases, but increases less than this and less than this and less than this. Labor income increases like, I don't know, depends, but increases. You can graph it with your computer, like that. But I made it extreme. At the beginning, it might be larger than okay? that. It could be like this. In fact, with that, labor income could be like that. There is a point at which kt becomes larger or equal than w of kt times l. Basically, it's the point at which kt is equal to A, oops, sorry, you can solve this at all. Kt at the row plus BA, BL, 1 over rho, 1 minus rho over rho, times B. Oof, uh, I'm so drunk. Let's normalize L to 1, so we'll solve the equation. Now you can solve this. Right? And you can see that this one grows more slowly than that. That grows exactly like the diagonal line. Right? You notice that this one, when k is equal to 0, right, stays above. Right? So say rho is 0.5. Okay? So this is 1. Perfect. So that's square root of k, k0, 0, 0, plus b, times ba. Very good. So that's ab squared. Start from here. Okay? And then, then it grows like a square root, in my example, of k. And so eventually it crosses the 45 degree line. Right? That's labor income. So labor income after, after, so in an overlapping generation model, for a while the workers have enough labor income, when capital is very small, to buy the capital and even more, so that the economy grows. But eventually they don't. Even if they consume zero. The only thing they can do is to reach, reach a steady state. Right? Interesting result, no? I just realized it by chance when I was writing that paper I mentioned to you on OLG with externalities, I said blah blah blah, because it comes out also with externalities. Doesn't matter, even if there are externalities, it doesn't change. In fact, even if they, you see, that's one of the reasons why the external is such a waste of time. I was trying to figure out what the externalities in production function did in the OLG model. And that was before, I, I was convinced that solving the infinite or leave the agent model was complicated because Paul kept repeating he couldn't. So this was like 1990, I said, well, let me work it out in OLG, it's simple. So I tried to work it out in OLG, I put the externality and noticed that in OLG, per se, because of this, there's no growth. Because the story of the externality is all on the reproducible factor. 
right? In the accumulable factor, in capital. But in the basic OLG model, you see, that's why model makes you think. So you always have to use model. Never say something, even theoretically, if you haven't checked with a little bit of a model and math. Your model can be unrealistic, but at least it's not idiotic. It's full of people that say idiotic things, in the sense that they are self-contradictory. It's embar I find that embarrassing. I don't talk to people that, that say repeatedly self-contradictory. It's embarrassing. So you write down the model and you say, oh, shit. <laughs> you know, I thought, I didn't realize. It's not true that intuition always takes you everywhere. Maybe if you're Einstein. You know, very smart people have fantastic intuition very quickly because their mind works super logically. They can see very many steps. Lucky them, right? Not everybody has 180 like you. And so, and not even if you have 180, it's not obvious you see all those steps. You write down your model and you work it out and you say, oh, that's interesting. I hadn't thought that. And so you write it out, you write down the model, you put and you see, you write down the condition for growth and you say, no way. It's impossible. Why? Because growth comes from the reproducible factor. In the overlapping generation model, the newborn has nothing of that. He only has labor. Right? And all the effort is on. So either the externality makes the labor productivity increase super fast, faster than capital. But if it is everything on capital, it just doesn't work because the guy runs out of money. He doesn't have enough income. And that has nothing to do with the externality, per se. In or out. It has to do with the allocational hypothesis. Or if you want, with the property right hypothesis, right? The source of income and income growth is the reproducible factor, which is obtained through investment and belongs to the older people. The young people are born naked. They own nothing. They only own the non-reproducible factor, the one that doesn't become more productive or becomes more productive, but much more slowly than what's needed. Hence, they become asymptotically poor. In the model, it doesn't have to, again, remember, it's the model, not reality. In reality, it depends, okay? But the model, that's what it says, okay? And then you think, oh my God, this has nothing to do with externality. This has to do with the structure of ownership in overlapping generation. Young people do not have anything. Old people have got the important things. And young people become rich only because they work and purchase the asset. But if their income grows more slowly than the stock of assets they have to purchase, eventually they will not be able to. Hence, growth will come to a halt. And so in the overlapping generation model, with that ownership structure, with that system of property rights, there is no growth. You go to a steady state, period. Even if it would be feasible to grow. Which suggests a number of considerations. That's where, again, doing the model is important. You stop in front of that and you say, okay, if the world were like that, no way. So point number one, obvious, that we see also in the infinite lived agent, probably technological, you know, it should tell a story. It's probably technological change. But then you can think of other things. The stock, the value of the stock of capital out there in the economy has grown in the data, more than income. The capital output ratio has been increasing. Okay? Uh, so, and it has been transferred in a way or another from the old people to the new people. Right? So there's got to be a way in which new people acquire pieces of their capital stock. By the way, this argument is why before I said, and I prove it in the paper if you care to check, but you should do it yourself works even if the person that is young starts saving and then accumulates capital stock from period one. So it doesn't really matter. So let me, let me, right? in this model, the example I gave you before, if you start, then you have no capital in the first period, only laboring. But then you start saving. In fact, I studied the most extreme example. When you're young, you, let, you work and save all the time. You never consume. You consume only when you're old, okay? 
So all you do is earn labor income, put it in the capital stock, earn a rate of return, and save everything back. So there is capitalized interest. Even then, you don't make it. Okay? Even then, you don't make it. Right? Because the stock grows fast. Even then, you know, you just reach a higher steady state, but you still reach a steady state. Okay? So there is no way out. There is literally no way out. Which suggests bequest must matter. Point number one. This the model says by for pure logical reason, transfer of wealth, of net wealth from old people to young people must be important. Because remember, the other assumption of this model is that the, the old people are very how can I say engorging. <laughs> They're very hungry. Right? They eat everything, they're very selfish. At the end, look at that. Consumption when all the T plus one is 